friends, welcome to Lok Sattva Yashasvi Bhav. Children, you may have come across many chemical reactions that take place around us. For example, the rusting of iron which is seen in the old iron grills. You may have observed the brown color layer on it which is called as rust. This is due to the chemical reaction that takes place between iron and the atmospheric oxygen. Similarly, the silver articles getting blackened is due to the chemical reaction that takes place between silver and the sulfur that is present in the polluted air. Let us take another simple example of copper. Copper combines with oxygen to give copper oxide. These reactions can be represented by using the chemical formula and they are called as chemical equations. Now, reactions may be expressed in words merely by saying copper reacts with oxygen to give copper oxide. This is called as a word reaction. But same reaction when written with the help of formula like copper with Cu reacts with oxygen that is O2 gives copper oxide that is CuO. This is called as a chemical equation. Though it is not complete. Here we may balance the equation so that the number of atoms on the left hand side will be equal to the number of atoms that are there on the right hand side. We will learn about balancing the chemical equations later. Before that let us study what are the rules for writing the chemical equations. Again we will express this equation where copper plus oxygen gives copper oxide. We see that those substances which react with each other they are called as the reactants and are always written on the left hand side. Whereas the new substance that is formed here that is copper oxide they are called as the products and are always written on the right hand side. There is an arrow mark in between the reactants and the products which is pointing towards the product and the tail towards the reactants. If there is any additional information regarding the chemical equation that can be written on the arrow mark which is there in the between like if you have to specify the temperature or the use of a catalyst or the pressure we can write it above the arrow mark here. Now let us see how we balance this chemical equations. What are the rules for balancing the chemical equation? Let us study start with the simple example of iron sulfide reacts with sulfuric acid to give ferrous sulfate and hydrogen sulfide gas. Here let us see which are the atoms that are involved in the chemical reaction. The atoms are iron, sulfur, hydrogen and oxygen in reactants as well as in the products. Now let us count the number of atoms that are there on both the sides. To begin with we will start with the atom having maximum number say oxygen. On the left hand side there are four atoms of oxygen. On the right hand side we have again four atoms of oxygen. Next let us see the number of hydrogen atoms on the left hand side. There are two atoms of sulfur on the left hand side and two atoms of sulfur on the right hand side. Similarly, there is one atom of iron on the left hand side and one atom of iron on the right hand side. With that we can say that the number of atoms on the left hand side is equal to the number of atoms on the right hand side. That means this first equation is already a balanced equation. Now let us take a second example where sulfur dioxide reacts with hydrogen sulfide to give sulfur and water molecule here. Now let us see which are the atoms involved in the reaction. The atoms are sulfur, oxygen, 
and hydrogen on both the sides. Let us count the number of atoms now. On the left hand side, we have two atoms of oxygen, whereas on the right hand side, we have only one atom of oxygen. Hence, we need to balance this number of atoms of oxygen. For that, we put 2 as a coefficient before hydrogen. We cannot put 2 just below oxygen. If we put a 2 here, the entire compound will get changed. So, we may always add the number of atoms only by putting a coefficient before the molecule. So, here we put 2, then we get 2 atoms of oxygen on the right hand side. Next, we proceed to the number of atoms of hydrogen. On the left hand side, we have two hydrogen atoms, but on the right hand side, now we get four hydrogen atoms here. Therefore, we need to put a two coefficient before hydrogen sulfide, so that we have four atoms of hydrogen on the left hand side and four atoms of hydrogen on the right hand side also. Now let us count the number of sulfur atoms. On the left hand side, we have three atoms of sulfur. Hence, we need to put three coefficient on the right hand side before sulfur so that the total number of sulfur atoms become the same on both the sides. Therefore, the balanced chemical equation or the balanced chemical reaction will be SO2 plus 2H2S gives 3S plus 2H2O. Now we call this as a complete balanced chemical reaction. Now let us see what are the different types of reactions that we are going to study. The four different types of reactions that we are seeing are the combination reaction, decomposition reaction, displacement reaction and the double displacement reaction. Let us now study in details about the combination type of reaction. When two or more substances combine to form a single product, then the reaction is known as a combination type of reaction. Let us take a simple example of iron reacts with sulfur to give iron sulfide. Two substances combine together to give one product and hence it is called as a combination type of reaction. During these reactions, heat may be absorbed or heat may be evolved. So whenever heat is absorbed in the reaction, it is termed as an endothermic type of reaction. For example, when you mix potassium nitrate in water, you feel the test tube from outside, you will feel it cooler than the room temperature, which means the heat is absorbed in the reaction. Therefore, you feel the test tube cool and hence it is an endothermic type of reaction. Similarly, the reaction when heat is evolved is called as an exothermic type of reaction. Example, when sodium hydroxide is added to water, in a test tube. You, if you feel the test tube, you will feel it hot than the hotter than the room temperature and hence it is called as an exothermic reaction. Now let us see what do we understand by the decomposition reaction. The reaction in which a compound is split into two or more simple substances is called as a decomposition reaction. This decomposition may take place with the help of heat or by passing electric current or in presence of sunlight or by using any acid. Now let us see how this reaction takes place, decomposition takes place by using heat, by passing heat. For example, when calcium carbonate is heated to 1000 degrees Celsius, it splits to form calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas is released. Such type of reactions where heat is involved are called as thermal decomposition reaction. Then another example where decomposition takes place by passing electric current. Children, in lower standards you have studied about electrolysis of water. 
when we pass current through water water splits to form hydrogen and oxygen gas these type of reactions are called as electrolytic decomposition reaction those decompositions that take place by using sunlight are called as some decomposition reactions take place in presence of sunlight example silver bromide when kept exposed to sunlight it get it splits to form silver and bromine gas is evolved another example of decomposition by using acid is when calcium sulfide reacts with hydrochloric acid it forms calcium chloride and h2s gas is evolved so this decomposition of calcium sulfide takes place by using hydrochloric acid now let us see what do we understand by displacement reactions we still have to discuss any more other type of chemical reactions which we will do in the next discussion